You're listening to the New World To Go podcast with your hosts, Redbird and BDLG. Hello and welcome to another episode of New World To Go. I am your host, Redbird, and with me is BDLG. Bordy. Yeah. How's it going tonight, buddy? Happy Easter to you. <laughs> Same to you, man. It's going good. I'm a little burnt, a little sunburnt. Uh, I was out, uh, you know, playing some playing some cornhole with fam. Uh, had a good time though. It was good. Yeah. How about you, man? Uh, good, man. Uh, you know, I'm wearing the wrong color of shirt today. I should not have picked red because I too got sunburnt. Uh, mm. Spent a lot of time building a playset, man. And here, here's my advice to all our listeners. Whatever, it, it, whenever you're buying a playset for your children and someone says it offers to build it for you for 200, 300, 500, whatever they want, just pay them. <laughs> pay the people. No matter man. what the price. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't even, yeah, it doesn't matter. Just pay the price because I guarantee <laughs> if, if they're charging that much money, you can't do it for cheaper. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. I, this is my second play set, my second time making this mistake, and uh, both times I've severely regretted it, not just a little bit. I've, <laughs> it's awful, dude. I've got 15 hours into this bad boy, and I probably got another 10 left, to be completely honest with you. Yo, better you than me, my friend. Better you than me. I wish we lived closer, because, man, I'd be hitting you up. Uh, boy, <laughs> you got to come over it. here, man. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no chance. What a terrible friend. All right. Yeah, I would I, w- I would have been there, just for the record. I would have helped. Okay, good. I, I figured yeah. that much. That's why I'd ask you. All right, man. Well, we got a cool show for you. We got another update on expeditions this week. Man, they're popping off with the news. It's almost like they're getting closer to launch, Bordy. They're putting out a lot yeah. of information yeah. here. I know. Uh, so real quick, guys, if you haven't checked out New World Fans already, you should do that. We are working on it, getting everything ready. Obviously, it's still under NDA, so we can't release any new stuff. But when the date comes and, and the closed beta releases and that NDA drops, we'll have a whole new website over there for if, uh, for you full of New World gu- guides, a map, a builder, all kinds of stuff for you to enjoy uh, the, the closed beta and then that gap. In between the closed beta and launch, you can play with all your toys over there at New World Fans until while you wait anxiously to get in on the live server. Right, Bordy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, dude, I'm ready to roll all that out, man. We talk about it all the time. I'm ready for the NDA to drop so that we can just start dropping uh, a lot of good content for everyone to enjoy. And I think I, I'm proud about what we're doing over there. I think we've got a lot of good stuff coming. Uh, and I, I hope, I think people will enjoy it. I really hope people enjoy uh, what's going on over there because we have put a lot of work into it. So I hope it's something useful and valuable to the community uh, of New World. Yes, yes, yes. I hope so, too, and I think it will be. Uh, Dude. All right, so let's hop right in here, man. Oh, uh, no. Let's hop right in here. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say something else, but... uh, Well, let's just hop right into the meat and potatoes of the episode. (laughs) Expeditions. So... Uh, you know, we all, we've obviously, expeditions are a rare, a fairly new feature to new world. And, and, uh, just like they did with the questing, which is also kind of a new feature to new world as well. They put out a, a pillars of expedition or an introduction to expedition and their view for it or vision for it. Uh, so I thought this was really interesting, man, because, you know, again, new world is transitioning from a survival, uh, sandbox to a more of a theme park MMO, right? So Mm -hmm. uh, obviously in a theme park, you want as many rides as possible. And Expedition is uh, is here to scratch that itch uh, of a small group organized PVE uh, event. So Bordy, uh, here is the vision that they placed on um, Expeditions. So the first of their three main pillars, pillars, okay, is that right? Pillars? Pillars, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got I thought it. spot so. on, dude. You, you nailed it. Yeah, I know that. I was just, I don't know why I said <laughs> peelers. All right, so attainable social experience. So expedition require a group of three to five players for co- completion, and we are actively balancing ex- expeditions against five players of the recommended level. We want players to form groups to take part in a cooperative piece of content where they will need to f- use teamwork to overcome challenges, solve puzzles, 
and battle monstrous bosses. So, dude, Ooh. here here we go, man. Uh, they say social experience. I mean, they didn't say positive or negative. We know how dungeons go in, <laughs> in MMOs. So this will be an experience. Yeah. That's what they want. To, they want you to know. Uh, but, dude, what do you think about you know again getting three to five players in here? Uh, to compete these, uh, you know, what seemed to be, uh, as we work up to max level, pretty challenging uh, group content. I like it, man. I mean, as far as dungeons go or expeditions in their case go, this is exactly what you want, I think, is 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 a place to go that, that you have to be um, together as a team. You have to work together as a team to defeat the boss or work together as a team to solve the puzzle. Uh, you know, a cooperative piece of content where you have to use teamwork, I think is perfect. I think that's spot on. You you, you know, you don't want a dungeon that's that's not an attainable social experience or an interactive cooperative experience to, to use your team and utilize your team. So, yeah, I mean, that it's kind of a cookie cutter i think right like i mean i think this is what you would expect out of a dungeon or out of an expedition and so yeah good i think that's what good. a lot of mmos shoot for is you know yeah you know i think it's interesting Bordy, because we've gotten away from obviously now in the old school game uh you know experience of an mmo you uh, back in the day i hate to use that we're we're uh, getting older now i guess but uh you know it was always like you know uh, there wasn't a voice. There was like typing. You had to, you know, you would go through experience and it was a very social experience, uh, you know, in the early stages of MMO. But now they've gotten to the point uh, kind of where, you know, you just kind of queue into something and, and then, you know, no one talks to each other. You just get through the content and there's no coordination required. You just you know, breeze on through, kill the boss, get your drop and then move out. Uh, so what's, what hopefully, uh, new world will succeed in man. And I, th or I hope is a, is a way to bring people together, to meet new people, to force you to communicate in order to get these done. Uh, I think, and I, I probably use this reference on the podcast a lot, but, but destiny does a really good job at that because you do need to get their raids their six man raids done. You have to have coordination to complete them. And I think that that, again, prompts you to build relationships with those people. And I, I have still a, a ton of friends from when I played Destiny that I still keep in contact with just because we were all so close. We spent a lot of time together in these dungeons or raids, uh, coordinating, you know, how to beat them and stuff. And, and again, it, it provides a great uh, environment to be social. And I hope New World can can succeed there. Yeah, me too. And I think with these puzzles, maybe they'll be able to obtain that level of, of, of coordination and teamwork because you're absolutely right, man. And a lot of MMOs, it is kind of just mindless when there, everybody's ran it so many times or, or whatever, that there really isn't any, anything involved or any, any challenge involved. It's, you just kind of breeze through it. So yeah, I think destiny is a fantastic example for that. And I hope that they kind of take some pages out of that book and, and move forward with their expeditions, man. That's, uh, that'd be awesome. If it, if it took that kind of teamwork and that kind of coordination and communication, I think that would be amazing. Yeah, imagine a destiny style experience within something like new world. I think that'd be dope. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I you know, Destiny's not your, <laughs> like run of the mill MMO, obviously it's a first person shooter, uh, you know, a bunch of things uh, that that, uh, you know, traditional MMOs aren't. But I think they do a great uh, a great job at group content in the raid category, at least their, their dungeons yeah. are basically or they call them uh, strikes. But but, you know, those are your run through. Don't talk to anybody. Complete the thing. But but their rating is, is uh, I think, top tier. Uh, so, the, yeah. so so the next pillar that we have here uh, is new PVE experience. We've mentioned this a little bit earlier about the, it being a theme park now, and we need a lot of experiences in this theme park to, to make sure we're, we're getting our, our money's worth as our ticket price, so to say, uh, because, you know, I think that's one of the main things in a theme park MMO is you have lots of things you can do. Diversify your time. Maybe I don't like uh, doing the PVP quest. Maybe I don't like, uh, you know, participating in the sieges, uh, that may not matter as long as like expeditions are really good. Right. So I think, you know, having another thing that people can choose from to spend their time in game, uh, is important. So, uh, the mechanics, the bosses and the special loot unique, uh, unique to expeditions will have that value on their own and provide a change of pace from the other activities you can experience in the open world. Uh, so Bordy, uh, what, what is your take on, on, uh, you know, the expeditions of being one of the featured, uh, PVE experiences in new world? 
Yeah, I think it's fine. And I think this is very, this, this one sentence right here, in my opinion, is very encouraging because we talked about before on previous episodes and on previous videos that we've done, uh, but we've kind of, we've kind of uh, criticized a little bit about how the boss in Emerine Excavation did not look unique. It did not look uh, like it was any, any type of unique experience going in there and fighting that boss just based on the screenshots we've seen because it was something we have seen out in the open world many times before. So this to me is very encouraging because it's plainly states the mechanics, bosses, and special loot will be unique to expeditions and have value on their own. So I would imagine that moving forward, we, we should get a lot of different types of bosses, possibly some mobs that you only encounter in the expedition, which I think would be uh, would be really good to have. Uh, so I like that, man. A lot of things you can't uh, you know experience otherwise unless you go into the expedition. I think that's that's great and provides a lot of value for for or gives you you know a lot of reason to go in there and run an expedition for sure. I think it's vital, man. I don't. I don't think it's just yeah. important. I, I think they have to nail that part because, you know, uh, these uh, expeditions, if they're not worth running once, then there's a problem because, yeah, you know, this is supposed to be content. I think that's replayable. You know, you're gonna do a lot of work on the expedition for each player to only go through them once. I think you're in trouble as far as a content standpoint goes in the game, because I think these take a lot of time to make, you know, you're thinking of a new unique storyline, a way to tell the lore. You're, you're, you know, you're hopefully making uh, unique bosses, unique boss mechanics, uh, unique loot tables. So you, you think you, you invest a lot of time and resources in these, uh, each expedition that you create, you would hope that there's a plan to make them replayable as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, uh, I think, it, well, it remains to be seen because I, they do create a lot of end game content. Like, uh, I think from what we know so far, sieges are end game, uh, invasions mm -hmm. are end game. Uh, from what we know about, uh, outpost rush, it seems to be an end game activity as well. Uh, how many of these expeditions are actually going to be in game, you know, in game expeditions? Because if they're not replayable in that manner, to where you know you can't get unique drops and stuff at, at max level, uh, then then I think that becomes even more interesting when we're discussing, uh, you know, the replayability in these. One thing, Bordy, it, maybe they'll be good XP. Maybe it'll be, uh, you know, the reason that you want to rerun these is that it's one of the best sources of XP in the game, as a potential as well. Maybe so, but they, you know they're going to have to add a bunch of a bunch of expeditions, I think, to make that happen and make it be something that you'd want to run to gain XP. Because running the same one over and over and over wouldn't be very fun. We also know that that Emrine Excavation. It says it in this article, and I may be jumping ahead a little bit here, but it says that Emrine Excavation is a level twenty five requirement. So, and we also know that once you once you go past ten levels, your XP is cut significantly. That was in the last patch notes. It's like cut by like fifty percent or something. Mm -hmm. So once you hit level thirty six or thirty five. 36 whatever it is you would you would then not want to go back and run that for for experience again because it wouldn't be worth it so then what are you going to run emrine excavation again for it wouldn't be you wouldn't run it for anything so i don't know what they're going to do there i think that's a challenge that they may have later on down the road maybe with an expansion or maybe something you know in a year or so down the road whenever they take a look at dungeons and, and why people would want to run them i think it took a long time for like something like eso to start having their or they they gave you a reason to run the dungeons all the time yeah. uh, to, to get the keys. I forget what that's called in ESO. We used to do it all the time. Undaunted. Right? To go, the Undaunted. There you go. Yes, thank you. Yeah. The, to, the Undaunted system, I think, is is really, really good. I think ESO has some flaws, but it's, it's probably one of the better dungeon systems, uh, in my opinion, of any MMO. You have a lot of reason to go back and run dungeons. You have things to push you in that direction. There's drops in the dungeons you want to get. Even older dungeons, you have a reason to go back and run. So uh, I, maybe in the future, we'll see something like that. I would imagine right out of the gate it'll probably just be a straight up level 25 dungeon you can run it when you hit 25 you can run it multiple times if you want to to get whatever gear you need out of there and then that may be it until you know a later on expansion or something that's kind of what i'm expecting anyway yeah and i think one of the reasons zso's dungeon system is so good are, are the loot tables having each dungeon yeah. have like one uh set bone or set uh or armor set of each light, medium, and heavy, as mm -hmm. well as you have each uh, boss at the end of each dungeon has a monster set that you can. So you're constantly, if you're, t and you know, one of the, one of the, I think, cool things about ESO is that you can just have multiple builds for your characters. And, you know, each character can have, require different, you know, set pieces and set bonuses. Farming those out is fun. I'm not going to lie. I enjoy yeah, that kind of is. content and trying to, you know, 
uh, theory crafting a build around like crit strike or something like that and then going out there and farming that gear out and that feeling that you get when you finally assemble your gear set and you get to test that out i think that's fun uh at least yeah. it's very repetitive i mean as far as what you know reusing content and making it you know worth your time i think uh, that's definitely uh viable uh, as far as you know again getting your, our money's worth in the time invested in the game uh, yeah so uh here is the last pillar uh of the three pillars of the visions for the um expeditions uh unique and engaging each expedition will tell its own story and be a unique experience we want to reward players putting in effort and taking part in each ex expedition with pieces of loot and gear unique to that experience to an incentivize exploring and conquering the various expeditions spread throughout a tournament Instead of increasing the enemy enemy difficulty in excessive or in successive expeditions, the mechanics and puzzles are going to be to vary. For example, AI sets for bosses and mini bosses will differ, and loot tables will be unique for each expedition. Boom! There you go. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Um, you know, I think one of the things that you know, they definitely can or should use expeditions are from the jump is, is, you know, uh, new world lacks lore, uh, as far as outside of the pages that you can find, uh, on the ground uh, to read about. So I think it, this, other than adding the main quest line, which we, we, uh, reviewed on last episode, this is also going to help them tell, tell the story of Eternum. Yeah. Which I think is really good. They need that. And I think there's, it's, it's a good way to, to, it's a good way to get people to run the expeditions too, because people who want to know more about the lore are going to go run the expeditions as well. So that gives you a reason there. And that this, this is very encouraging too, because it says that they want to have mechanics and puzzles that are going to vary, which is really good. And then they want to have the AI sets for bosses and mini bosses differ and loot tables will be unique for each expedition. So all of those are really good things and reasons why you'd want to go run the expedition uh, potentially multiple times. So I think they're, Dude, I think they're on the right path. I think these three pillars are are spot on as they typically are whenever they release these types of 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 uh, posts. I I know I've said it before. I really like these these pillar type posts. I'm kind of OCD. I like organization. And whenever I see these broken down into like three or four main pillars for for these specific uh, you know sections of the game, I like these because it shows you where their head's at, shows you what they're trying to accomplish with these things, um, and and they're always pretty good, and this is no exception. I, I like where they're going with these. I think they're spot on with all three of these pillars. So let's just hope that with these pillars, then they can execute what they have as their vision and take these right. into the game. Uh, that's a whole other story, and hopefully we'll, we'll see that come to fruition over the next few months. Right, and, you know, obviously it's bold, a little bold of them to put these out in front of everybody, but I like it. Like you said, I like the transparency, and I like that they're, you know, again, we, they're, they're telling us what they're doing or what they're trying to do, so it's very transparent, and I think also kind of tempers expectations a little bit as well uh, because now we, we know yeah. what their vision is and, and to think that we're going to get like something completely opposite of this or completely, you know, in a different direction, I think at this point is silly because, you know, again, they're laying these out for us. These are what their visions are for uh, expeditions. I think, you know, if they can execute this, then I think, or hopefully... Uh, or I hope that there they will be experiences that, that players can continue to enjoy as they level up and hopefully get the max level. Um, yeah, absolutely. Real quick here, Bordy, let's let's look over these. Uh, they did post uh, a little bit about each of the two uh, expeditions that they have so far. Uh, just a little yep. bit of detail we'll, we'll kind of pick through here. Uh, we've spoken a lot about the Amrine expedition. One of the things that, uh, that or the only thing that really drew my attention here is with a level 25 requirement, the Amarine Expedition is supposed to, meant to be an introductory experience for uh, two expeditions. So uh, they, they mentioned that the uh, the puzzles and the AI will be scaled accordingly, but but more importantly, I think this they, the way this reads is this will be the first expedition that we experience in New World. 
Yeah, I get that too. I mean, why would it be an introductory expedition if you could run one at level 10? You know, that would be the introductory experience. And then you'd get to level 25, which would no longer be that experience. So, yeah, I think that's, you know, it is what it is. I So I think at level 25, you're going to be able to run your first expedition. And that's, I guess, whenever they deemed it appropriate to throw one out there uh, to, to learn the mechanics. But does that mean, so what do you think now with this level 25 being an introductory experience? Do you think that it's going to be level 25 and then we're not going to see one again until end game? Or do you think it'll be level 25 and then we'll see another one at maybe level 30 and then 35 or how do you think they're going to scale out i definitely think they're going to have some in between this and end game because at so. that point why like you're why are we being introduced so early if we're not going to see another one yeah. for 35 more levels um <laughs> yeah i could see them doing it every 10 levels because like we had mentioned before you you hit that you hit a wall like somewhere in there you know if you get like below or above 10 levels, like you start to see a massive drop off of XP gain. So yeah. uh, I could see them doing it one every 10 levels. If, if this is one of the, you know, part of their plan to diversify the leveling experience, uh, you know, maybe, you know, I, I'm going to attempt to farm out a couple items out of each uh, of these expeditions. If they're, the loot tables are valuable. Um, you know, I could see, uh, you know, one every 10 levels being okay. And then at end game having like three or four, I, I think that, you know, what is that? Like probably no oh boy, like seven, <laughs> seven, 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 seven or eight, uh, you know, expeditions at launch. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. That was going to be a question that I had for you too. And since you mentioned that, I'll just go ahead and ask you how many how many expeditions do you think would be enough for a launched product? I think, and because here's the thing: is they've they've often said that that their vision or their goal, uh, even post launch, is to continue to update New World on a monthly basis or you know, they're putting out content right now at a monthly basis. And these aren't like small patches, like adjusted fire no, staff they're damage. Huge. They're adding right. so much to the game. And if they keep this pace up, dude, I think initially for the first, the, the at launch, I think six is fine. So you have one at 25, 35, 45, 55, which 55 can probably be considered an in game expedition, right? 55 or yeah. 60. And then maybe like, mm -hmm. it's, uh, two or three uh, max level ex expeditions to try. I mean, that's going to get people by for a month because not only that, dude, you have invasions, which is like a raid, basically. 50 people and, and having to fight back the uh, corrupted. So then, you know, you have those yeah. two in-game PvE experiences, uh, you know, three, three or two or three uh, expeditions and then the invasions. I mean, I think that's pretty good at launch. You know, a lot of people... This is the problem. I think a lot of people get caught up in comparing uh, new MMOs to old MMOs, and that just can't be the case. It's unrealistic. We can't. They can't yeah. have launch with forty expeditions. It's just not going to happen. Right. That took a lot of time. Like for something like ESO to come up with the system they have, all those all those dungeons weren't there on release. I mean, the, and I don't even know the Undaunted thing wasn't there on release. The, all that stuff came way well, later. Well, the Undaunted thing was, but it was days. terrible. It wasn't oh, it was? good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't okay. that, the way that it is remember. now. It was just some yeah. like leveling experience that you got like passive and active skills, but the you gotcha. know, yeah, it wasn't good. It it wasn't as yeah. good as it is now, at least. Well, the point is, it took a lot of time to evolve yes. that stuff, you know, yeah. over time. And so now they have a, a just a plethora of of content of dungeons you can do. And I would imagine New World will get there sometime as well. So that is a you know a, a very valid point. We got to stop thinking about uh, comparing New World to the amount of content uh, that other games have because this is a launch product. This is brand new, it's launching and I I agree with you man. I think 6 to 8 expeditions right out of the gate is a lot, dude. That's a lot of dungeons. That's a lot of content. They've only revealed two so the far, game, so. They've only revealed two, so I don't know how many more we'll get, but whenever you start really breaking down the amount of content that's in the game, there's a lot. You also have the uh, arenas that's PVE content too. True. It's in game yeah. PVE content. So there's, there's a lot of things, man. You can sit here and count it up. There's a lot of things to, to do in the game already. They just have well, to tie it together. They're almost there, man. It's close. It's, well, here's the it, thing. It's looking good. Here's the thing that new world, I think does, uh, that old school MMOs used to do. And, and a lot of the newer theme park MMOs don't do anymore. And they have open world dungeons in New World too. When I, I yeah. when I was in the Reekwater mm -hmm. event, there were a couple, I think, open world uh, like you know what you consider group content of elite mobs where you need multiple people to fight through to get to, you know, whatever quest item or boss that you have. I mean, there you got to count yeah. that too. I think at this point, you know, having those oh, in game yeah. uh, zones like Reekwater, 
uh, and uh, Ebon Scale Reach, where you know you think you're probably going to have a, a few of those open world experiences. You know, combine all that together, dude, and and I think as corrupted far as portals. like a lo- corrupted portals, there there you go, another really uh, I think fun activity. And you know, uh, what's unique about New World is you have a lot of different currencies too. So you, you know you have you get Azoth from those, so you'll be you want to run those right because you'll your mm-hmm. fast travels tied to Azoth. Gold obviously going to be very important. Uh, so you'll you know whatever activity we find is the best to earn gold, you'll you'll you want to do that activity as well. And then you know you you'll want to do faction stuff too. If if the faction vendor is the way that you can transmute your supplies and all those things. Uh, you yeah. know, so uh, I really do think, you know, I don't think that two is all we're going to get. Uh, but, but I definitely think, no. uh, I think it's wrapping up, like you said, to be a pretty decent launch product at this point, as far as content goes. Yeah. Yeah. They've got a few things they need to do to make the game loop complete, but if they can pull that off, man, it's going to be a really good launch product. I, I do believe that. I would say the one thing, and we mentioned this a lot, the one thing that there's a big gap in or the only thing that I see a big gap in is the territory control system. They've got to figure that out. And, and, and it seems like they are, they, they have mentioned that they have some more stuff to reveal uh, in that category. So hopefully, you know, that will tie that together. Yeah. Yeah. I think once they finish that, then yeah, I think everything else will come together nicely. All right. So here we, we have detailed the garden of Genesis in a, in a YouTube video. I believe we've covered it quite a bit on the, on the podcast as well, but here, here's some uh, interesting stuff about uh, garden of Genesis in in my mind uh, that they posted or revealed in this one. So as an in game expedition intended for level 60 players, the garden of Genesis will serve as a more challenging experience with these higher level expeditions. Players can expect to solve different types of puzzles varying uh, uh fight varying ai and more and and more have even more challenge <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is the way it's written that is of me uh and ha- and have and even have more, even more. <laughs> challenging experiences yeah. so level 60 for garden of genesis Bordy, what do you think about that I I think it's fine. I think, you know, they're probably testing these out. I would imagine an alpha. So they have their introductory experience and now they're testing out maybe an in-game experience. So they get both sides of the spectrum and then they'll probably work some in in between. That's my guess. I hope that's what happens. But this one in particular, I'm really excited about because the Angry Earth is a very intriguing mob to me. It's an interesting one. It's unique to New World. It's a very... It's a very unique take on on a, a monster. I, I love it. There's so many different variations of Angry Earth that you fight in Eternum. And this one in particular, I'm very excited about. And uh, hopefully they'll put one kind of somewhere in between that features some Angry Earth as well, because I, I like this I like this mob type. I like this enemy faction. It's, it's really fun to fight. They're challenging and they're unique monsters. I think there's a lot to learn from them as far as lore goes as well, because they're the natives yeah, of, of Eternum. So. Yeah, very mysterious. We don't know much about them at all yet, and that's that's exciting too. I want to know like where they came from, why they're defending the uh, turn them how they are. You know, it it seems like they were maybe once good guys, or maybe they still are, and now we're some, some something has provoked them, or I don't know. Uh, it's they're they're interesting well, for sure. Yeah. We're we're the you know. Uh... We're the invaders, so they, they definitely exactly. yeah. uh, see us as a threat to the health of Eternum or the overall, you know, uh, stasis or status of Eternum. So, yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. It'll be cool to see what, you know, where did they or originate? How, how were they created? Uh, you know, Azoth is still a pretty mysterious thing, Bordy, uh, you know, as far as lore goes as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm excited to see, uh, uncover more about the mysteries of that as well. I, and I think these expeditions are a great way to do that. And I'm excited to run them, man. This one looks really cool. This screenshot right right here looks dope. You got a for the for the audio listeners, you have three guys fighting a, a big angry earth guy with a bow in the middle and then another little angry earth guy over to the left. Uh, it was with a guy about to throw a spear at this dude and the, the environment looks really cool. It's real mossy and there's a big statue face there. It's it's all stoned up and, Here, and, and mossy looking. It's really, really cool. Here's the thing, dude. This is ancient. This is an ancient temple. This this is just it is. the ancient you know, here's a theory, Bordy. Okay. Okay. You know, a, a ancient seems to be inspired by like Greek, Roman, Egyptian, even uh civilization, dude. 
I mean, it seems like, you know, they were here before a lot of things. And so that, that'll be interesting to see how all that plays out with the ancients and, and the angry earth, because I think those two factions are, are two that w- will kind of tell the story of what a tournament is, which I think is another big yeah. question. Uh, this yeah. mysterious item or island, but you know, what, what is here and what, what is Azoth and what kind of power does it obtain or what's the source of it? Bro, it gets me excited. I th- this stuff gets me excited, man. I'm ready to learn more about a tournament. The, their their setting and their story is. I hope they don't blow it, dude. I I I hope that the story Let's, is good. It has so much potential, dude. It gets me so excited thinking about it. If man. we have thinking a gap, possibilities. Here, here's the thing, dude. If we have a gap, we'll have to dig through some of the lore of their New World fans. And if we have a gap in between, like, um, you know, patch notes or or uh, article releases, we'll have to try to dig into some of this and and maybe yeah. figure out what we know so far. Because I'm really, again, interested in in the lore uh, behind these two factions, especially. Yeah, me too. All right, guys. Well, that's about it for expeditions. Uh, if you want to see the full article, we have it over there. It posted on New World Fans, uh, so go check that out over there. Uh, Bordy, this is going to be a very special uh, company of the week because it's going to be our company. Yeah, absolutely. We've had a lot of people asking us about our company recently uh, on the Discord and through DMs and various things and whether or not we're going to have a company. So we thought, hey, we'll we'll go ahead and throw it out there to let you guys know, yes, we are going to have a company in New World. The name of the company is The Revenant. The Revenant is a company that Red and I founded back in our Crowfall days. Mm. Uh, It was a very, yeah, yeah, man. And so we're carrying that over. And that's The Revenant will probably be the Studio Loot Guild name. Uh, Instead of having an in-game guild called studio loot you know we wanted something cool and and the revenant sounds cool uh so we have the revenant here that's just carried over that's that'll probably be our guild it's uh, a multi-game guild it's a multi-game guild in new world and then any other games we play it'll be the revenant uh so come join us man if you guys want to be a part of the studio loot guild called the revenant or company rather in new world come join us uh red and i created this a long time ago we really just we really focus on having a positive and encouraging atmosphere to all of our members that's what we're about we want we, we really focus on community we want you guys to feel welcome we don't want you to be in there if you're a jerk so if you're a jerk don't even bother joining if you're not if you're a cool person you want to join you want to have fun join us we're all about having fun we do want to compete in pvp uh as much as possible we also will run pv we're, we plan on doing literally everything in the game yeah. all the time red and i are going to be playing this obviously a ton, as much as we can we both have jobs and families uh so we do need uh <laughs> we have a lot of people in the discord that have that have signed up to we do to have a lot of, so far to kind of do leadership roles as well. So we should have some organized stuff going on. Um, and we have a lot of people joining the discord. Uh, so if you guys want to join and be a part of it, please join our discord. You're more than welcome to join our company whenever the, the game launches. And we, you know, may end up having multiple companies if we reach the cap of 50, which I'm pretty sure we're going through at this well, point. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, what is the cap now? 50 or a hundred? 50 still. Well, yeah. okay. Well, yeah, we'll probably have to have two. Uh, we have a lot of good yeah. leadership over there in our, uh, obviously we're going to try to, we will be playing as well, but we have a lot of other people that are in the company that are, uh, you know, just good people. That's what we really, you know, we aren't, we aren't going to be the absolute peak, you know, cream of the crop guild, but we are going to compete in everything and we're going to have fun doing it. That's the most important part for us is just to have a good community built, you know, build relationships with people. Uh, get a chance to talk to you guys, have fun, uh, and play a new world. And that's uh, what it's all about, man. Building relationships with people, dude. That's, that's, that's what I enjoy doing in MMOs and in any other game for that matter. just meeting people, building those relationships and, and ultimately having a good time playing <laughs> video games. Yeah. I can't wait to be in an invasion with like 30 people in the discord. I think that's going to be, a time. <laughs> that's gonna be, gonna be fun. fun times. Yeah. Yeah, it is for sure. New world brings that to the table, man. This, the, the sieges and the exp- uh, invasions are pretty unique to MMOs, the 50 person. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be fun to see how this play out as far as the social experience goes, <laughs> because yeah. having that many people in a Discord could be uh, chaotic and also fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to be a part of the Revenant, uh, the Discord and all that will you. be linked. Yeah, the Discord, all that will be linked below. Uh, we'd love to have you guys join. Um, so come join. Join the Discord. Let us know in there, and then uh, we'll we'll get you down, and we'll add you whenever the game goes live. Yeah, and just a heads up, we will be switching the, the Discord. If you're already in the Discord or you're joining the Discord soon, we're going to be doing a lot of work to it uh, leading up to launch. So we'll, we'll be we're, we're working some stuff. But uh, 
uh, we have a channel in there that you can, if you want to be part of the company, you just go ahead and, and type a one in there and, and we'll get you added when the game launches. And, and, uh, dude, I, I can't wait again. It's going to be fun, man. Uh, it's going to be a ton yeah. of fun, uh, launch week and beyond getting to play with people and getting to experience. We're getting close, people. man. I know, man. Oh, dude. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, it's crazy, man. Cause I remember being uh, so excited about yeah, this time last year <laughs> and I, I was know, like, I know. and and being so hyped for this game to come out and we've been it's been a year since I the know, initial release crazy. date uh may i think it was may 2020 yeah uh so dude i mean yeah i'm ready for it to come out i'm ready to spend a lot of time i'm ready to have a game that i can just dive into and and you know and and spend a lot of time the last time i ever i did something like that was probably destiny one and that's been a long time ago six or seven years ago yeah so yeah. you and uh, me both brother i'm ready for it i'm excited man i'm excited all right guys well thank you so much for watching and listening to our podcast again uh if you're watching this on youtube please hit the subscription button if you're on apple listening on any podcasting platform give us a rating it helps us out helps people find the, the podcast and, and and again we're we're going to be covering new world for however long new world exists so <laughs> we 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 hope uh you guys enjoy the podcast um and we enjoy doing it for you so thank you guys so much again for for listening and watching and we'll see you in the next episode of new world to go